Hello, everyone. Welcome back to the channel. Today, I'm with a very special guest. Her name is Purvi, and she's from India, studying medicine. Purvi, would you like to introduce yourself? Yes, definitely. Hello, everyone. I am Purvi Gehlot, and I'm currently studying in Ramaya Medical College, Bangalore, which is in India. And uh, yeah, I'm very excited to be on this channel. So thank you for being here and for reaching out because you were the one who actually reached out to me to make a collab video. What's awesome about that is that if you're watching this, you could also check out Purvi's channel. And there's a video where I'm talking about my experience in greater detail. So I know I've made a video about that. It was actually my first, first YouTube video, but I talk much more in depth about you know the journey to medicine so if you're interested in checking that out you should definitely check out her channel and i know she's done other collab videos with uh, recently i think you did one with someone in the uk right yeah i did with senna she is from the exeter university excellent so that that's really cool if you want to compare medical programs throughout the world well you know purvi is doing a great job <laughs> with that so i thought i'd hop on board here and uh, and compare uh, my program with yours on this channel. So now that you've introduced yourself, can you tell us why you decided to pursue a degree in medicine? Yeah, sure. Ever since I was young, there were many hospital visits, be it because of medical conditions of my grandparents or my sister. Uh, I distinctly remember one time where um, my dad was admitted. He had a clot in one of his... Uh, 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 blood vessels uh, somewhere near his neck and uh, he had like severe headache for quite long time and uh, we didn't know how severe it was but then once we got him there and the doctor told us how severe it could have been might have landed up in paralysis or anything could have happened for that matter and then I saw how the whole medical system works, how uh, the doctors took really good care of him. Something that inspired me the most there was uh, the care that everybody worked as a team. And the only thing they worked together was to cure the person and send him back home happily. And uh, that sort of impacted me uh, because I genuinely till then I was I think I was in sixth grade so I was trying to figure out you know what my interest is where exactly should I uh, pursue like my further education in and after that incident I really thought maybe if, if I'm there I think I should impact others lives so what better than medicine so that was one inc incident where I really felt like yeah MBBS is it. <laughs> I think that's a beautiful story and a great, very inspiring to many, many people. So thank you for sharing that with us. And <clears throat> so you mentioned MBBS. So I think yours in Canada might not be familiar with that term. So what does it stand for? It is actually not English, but when you say it in English, it's a Bachelor of Medicine and Bachelor of Surgery, which is actually Medicine Baclore Baclore Surgery if I'm not wrong. Uh, so basically, it is a five and a half year course, uh, which is structured with uh, four and a half years of uh, lectures, training, and one year of internship where we work in the hospitals. Yeah, so should I tell in more detail about like MBBS? Yeah, so, so I was going to ask you in my program, that's four years, right? We spend our first two years pretty much learning the theory, and then the next two years doing clinical rotation, hospital rotations. So I want to, I want to know what, what the difference is, because you said you're spending four years um, doing theory, right? And then the last year or so, year and a half, maybe doing your, your rotation. So you got into medicine. So maybe before we go into it, what was your journey like? You got into medicine after high school. Is that what I'm understanding? Yeah, after my high school, that is my 12th grade, I appeared for an entrance exam here in India, which is called NEET, that stands for Na National Eligibility Come Entrance Test, which is basically a three hours MCQ based exam, which has 90 questions of biology and uh, 45 questions each of physics and chemistry. So based on the score you get and the rank you're given all across India, you get to choose your medical college. And based on the ranking, you're basically allotted which college is suitable for you. Okay, very interesting. So 
I think this is where the difference is between our programs is that you, because you came out of high school, you haven't completed what we call the prerequisite science courses. So maybe is, is that what you spend most of your time? Because now I believe you're in second year, right? Yes, yes. So can you tell me what you've learned so far in medicine? Yeah, so uh, basically in our course, first year we study only the preclinical subjects that, that includes anatomy, physiology and biochemistry. So in anatomy, we study the whole uh, human body anatomy along with like visiting dissection uh, labs and all of that and uh, in physiology we it's only theory what we study in the first year so physiology we study about, about the different tests the urine analysis blood analysis and all of that and in the second year we study pathology microbiology and pharmacology so um, in second year one more thing that adds up is uh, we start going to the hospital for three hours every day where our work is to observe the patient and take case histories so we are posted in uh, different departments. Um, so that will basically be like once we are posted in general medicine or maybe surgery. And then next time we will be posted in like um, ENT, ophthal. So there we, we don't know a lot about the theory, but what we definitely know is like how to take case history and how to interact with the patients. So we can basically get a way to know what different fields are going to look like in the future. But uh, coming to the theory, it's only pathology, pharmacology, and microbiology. When we go to, like further, like suppose in the third year, we'll have ENT and ophthal. And then in the fourth year, we'll have all the subjects like general medicine, OBG, psychiatry, dermat, um, ortho, respiratory medicine, all of that. Okay. Wow. Okay. So very, very different, but I think it's, it's, it's very important that they're getting you clinically exposed from the beginning for relatively early, at least, because I mean, half of what medicine is all about is the patient interaction, right? And the humanistic aspect in medicine. So the fact that you're working on these uh, professional qualities from early on in your career, in your medical journey, I think is very, very important. The theory is going to come, right? Um, but it sounds that fourth year uh, is going to be the heaviest year yeah. for you, at least. I mean, I, I can't say after that you're starting your rotation, so I don't know how demanding that's going to be. But okay, so that's really fascinating. Very different from my program, but I think equally as interesting. So that brings me to my next yeah. point. I, I know it's still early in your journey, but do you have any idea of what fields you may or may not be interested in? Uh, so before I entered medicine, it was um, it was cardiothoracic surgery. I was very specific that too. Uh, but then I think one thing that had happened to me was I was thinking only in that direction. I didn't think of any other field at all. But now that I have been to uh, many departments, I have been posted in... Um, almost all of them now. I've been posted in ENT, ophthal, general medicine, surgery. So what has interested me the most is um, dermat uh, and radiology. Um, I did like surgery, but I'm not sure if I would want to do it. But definitely dermat and radio were one of the best is what I felt. That's that's a that's a big change from cardiothoracic surgery. <laughs> yeah. And what's also fascinating is that even between dermatology and radiology, there's a huge difference, right? There's not, I don't even think there's any overlap if you think about <laughs> it. <laughs> but but what is common between the two, at least here, so I'm curious if it's the same in, in India, is that um, they have great lifestyles. So dermatology and radiology have very, very good lifestyles. It's like you, you have a set schedule. You're not really on call. Um, so I think that, you know, people, people say that dermatology and radiology are very underrated fields because they might not feel like medical field because you're not necessarily like in dermatology, you're just, you're dealing with skin conditions, right? And in radiology, you're basically sitting in front of a computer I'm being very general here. This is a stereotype, but it's not what it actually is. But just to give people an idea, 
you're looking at x-rays, you're looking at CT scans, you're looking at MRI scans almost all day. And the patient interaction is, is much more minimal. But I, I, you know, I think that's really awesome that, that you see, like, it's so beautiful how, if you're just exposed to a field, you can, yeah. you can, you can be very close minded starting medical school without that exposure. And then really open your eyes to all these different, beautiful, fascinating fields in medicine. Correct, correct, yes. So I guess my follow-up question is, so what's the process after you finish medical school? So here we have to apply for residency and we go through like an algorithm and a matching system. So how is it in India? And and I guess, are you planning on staying in India for medicine? Uh, I have my options open. So if I'm applying for uh, USMLD, I will be applying definitely during my internship for the step one. But uh, I've not really decided upon if I really want to do it. I've kept my options open. But if I talk about India, um, now the system has actually changed. Previously, we just had to appear for one exam that was called NEET PG. So we wrote NEET UG to get into med school. Now we write NEET PG. That is again an MCQ test to get, uh, so we'll be again given a rank and based on the rank, we will get to choose our uh, specialty and we'll be allotted a college. But now what the change they have done is we'll have uh, two exams, which will be called next one and next two. So next one will be in our final year and next two will be uh, around our internship. So we'll have to cl clear both these tests only to be eligible first to apply for a post-graduation and second to get a medical license. So if we fail either of these steps, we might have to like reappear for the exam or repeat a year. So that's something that has changed now. Okay, interesting. Okay, cool. So I think that summarizes all the questions I wanted to ask you about your program or maybe one more actually, now that I think about it. Are you enjoying what you're doing? Is it is it is it what you've expected? Is it what I expected? Um, no, <laughs> because the uh, one thing that we're told uh, when we talk about NEET UG uh, during our preparation, all our professors, everybody tells us uh, in Hindi they say "ek bar padlo, baki maze hi maze hai," which means study now and rest of your life is sorted. But uh, then we come to medical school and we're like, okay, life is not sorted yet. There's a lot more to study. So uh, it's definitely not what I expected. But yeah, I'm enjoying it. I mean, this is what I wanted to do. And finally, being able to do that, I'm definitely liking it. That's awesome. That's the most important thing, right? Uh, you know, the journey might not Definitely. happen the way we expect it to happen, but as long as we're enjoying every step of the way, I think that's what matters most. So I guess my final question to you is, do you have any advice for aspiring medical students? Uh, definitely. Um, when I talk about India, the competition is so, so tough. We have... Uh, 25 lakh students appearing every year and only 1 lakh students get to uh, get the seat for medical school. I think the only thing is you need to believe in yourself and your dreams and you need to keep reminding why you have chosen to do this. Uh, the only thing that you can do is keep motivating yourself and you will definitely land up where exactly you belong. The only thing is hard work. I remember the time I used to prepare. There were days that I was like, let's just quit. Why am I doing this? But then those were the days when you actually have to give your best and think about what future you are hoping to create for yourself. So yeah, just keep hustling. Amazing. Thank you so much for that insightful advice. I'm sure everyone's going to appreciate it. And I guess that concludes our our discussion so again thank you so much for being on the channel and for sharing all of this uh, amazing information about what a degree in medicine could look like outside of canada so again thank you thank so much thank you for being so on the much for having me and thank you so much for taking out your time and replying to my dm when i asked for a collab so thank you so much
Of course. I, I thought it was really, really helpful. It was really cool. And I'd be very much interested in doing this with other individuals because now I'm even more curious, you know, like what does the medical system, what does medical education look like outside of my school? Like, even within Canada, the system is different depending on what school you go to. Even within the same city, we have two medical schools in my city and the way they teach medicine is different. But at the end of the day, everyone comes out as fantastic doctors. That's the most important part. But the way they go about it is different. I think that's very, very fascinating. So great. Thanks so much. Great. And I wish you all the best in your medical journey. Thank you. Thank you so much.